Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another quadratics question. So what we have to do is we have to take these graphs here and we have to write an equation for each parabola. So I'm gonna actually go through a couple of videos with this kind of question. I just can't fit all the graphs in one video on the whiteboard. So I'm gonna split it up into multiple questions. So these are the first two over here. Now, notice we're given points on these parabolas. We're given two points. Usually in previous sections, what we've done is we've taken three points and found the equation, but the equation was in standard form. So we had to find that A, B, and C value. So we needed three points and then we did substitution elimination. We did a couple of examples like that. Well, notice in this case, what's happening is we're only given two points in each of these. So how are we gonna do that now? Well, notice what's nice is that one of the points is a vertex in each of these. And so instead of putting it in this format, what we can do is we can put it in the vertex format, the vertex form, which we know is this. And because we have the vertex, of each of these, then we automatically have the H and K value. Because remember, for a vertex form, where does the vertex lie? It lies at the H and K value. So if we find the constants in this format, the A, H, and K, we still have three constants to find. But because we're given the vertex, one point automatically gives us two of the constants. And then we just have to use the other point to find that remaining A value. So if you get something like this where you're given the vertex uh, on a graph and you have to find the equation, highly recommend putting it in vertex form, right? And then you don't even have to do algebra for the H and K value, which is nice too. You just automatically get it. So notice that for part A, the H value is three, the K value is zero. Right? The H value is three, the K value is zero, the X and Y values of the vertex respectively. And so once you have that, what you can do is you could plug it in. Now the A value, we still don't know what it is. So let's keep it like that. Then we got X minus three squared, and then we have plus zero. So we don't even have to write that, that K value. And so now what we can do is we have to solve for that A value still, but we can do that with the other point. Now you have to use the other point. You can't, for example, use the vertex again to solve for the A value because notice if you plug in the vertex, what's gonna happen is if you plug in three over here, you'd end up with zero times the A value. It's gonna get rid of the A value, right? So then we won't be able to solve for it. So you do have to use the other point to solve for the A value, but it's fairly simple. All you do, you put a four, for the y value, the a value we're solving for, and then you put the five for the x value. And so from here, work with the bracket first, then you work with the exponent. So you end up with four equaling four a divided by four. So in this case, a is just equal to one. So it's a fairly simple quadratic. So here, a value is just one, we could just erase that. There's like an imaginary one right there. And so this ends up just being this quadratic, right? That's the equation. That's how you do part A. And then if you have time, you could quickly check it. So three and zero, notice that that is the vertex of that. Then if we plug in five for X, five minus three is two to the power of two, does indeed give us that Y value of four. So that's how you could quickly check your answer. All right, so that is it for part A. Now, what about part B? Part B, again, we're given a vertex, zero and two, so automatically H is zero, K is two. In this case, the vertex is actually on the Y axis. It's the Y intercept, right? Whenever the vertex is on the Y axis, the H value is always gonna be zero. That X is gonna be zero. That axis of symmetry is gonna be zero. So now all that's left to find is the A value. 
uh, and we could use this other point, negative 2 and 14. So first we plug in the h and k here. So we'll have y equals a uh, x minus 0. So that's just going to be x squared plus k, which is 2, like that. And so now we can plug in negative 2 and 14 for x and y respectively, solve for that a value. So we'd have 14 equals a uh, negative 2 squared plus 2, like that. So from here, we'll have negative 2 to the power 2 gives us 4. And we got plus 2. Now from here, we got to isolate for this a, so let's bring the 2 over. 14 minus 2 gives us 12, and we got 4a divided by 4. a is equal to 3. So we just take that a value of 3, plug it in here, and so the equation ends up being y equals 3x squared plus 2. Right? So here, another way to write this is like that, right? So we could tell the vertex is 0 and 2. And then if you want to test this point, we could plug in negative 2 here for x. Negative 2 to the power 2 gives us 4 times 3 gives us 12 plus 2 does indeed give us 14. All right, so if you get graphs like this, just as a review, vertex, if you're given a vertex, it's the h and k value, and then just use the other point to solve for the a value. And in the next few videos, we're going to go over other graphs.